everyone. We're here today to talk about the SVM and how developers can use it beyond the Solana blockchain. Now, I'm Lucas. I'm a software engineer at Anza. I work on compilers and runtime. And I'm Joe. I work on on-chain programs and runtime as well, and we both do SVM. Yeah. So as you guys know, um, SVM has been heating up pretty quick. So there's a lot of projects that have been kind of like rising up for all different new use cases and niches to basically use SVM outside of the validator, right? So here's just like a couple of the teams that you might have heard of. So as you can see, there's a lot of different use cases already that have come up. There's going to be probably more. So some permission environments, a few different kinds of rollups that maybe roll up to different chains or roll up to Solana which there's been some debates about already. And then some other stuff too, like ephemeral rollups, right? So like some of these new cool like innovations. But what exactly like is SVM? Like what are people like building with? And what, what exactly are they able to do with it? And we're gonna talk a little bit about this today, but first we're gonna talk about like what is this in the actual validator? Now in order for us to understand what the SVM is, we need to understand where it came from. So. Let's think about how transaction processing pipeline works in Agave. First, we have a transaction schedule decide uh, what transactions can be executed in a batch. And then bank is one of the Agave components, loads all the accounts from the database. Uh, the transaction uh, processor performs all the checks to make sure this transaction is valid. Then we have a message processor, which will serialize all the accounts and, paste the data, uh, and pass the data to the virtual machine. And after that happens, we have what we call the commit stage. We backtrack all the results down from the virtual machine to the account CP. So we return to the message processor the program execution result. We just realize the accounts in the message processor. And then the transaction processor verifies that none of the accounts constraints are violated, like balance, uh, lump ports consumed, uh, rent. And even if, you, if we return to a read-only account, and then if bank decides this account was, uh, this transaction was successful, we commit all the results in the database. But we noticed that this is a massive entanglement in our repository, and we decided to clean things up and build a new product out of that. We call this the Solana Virtual Machine, the SVM. The SVM consists of transaction processor, message processor, and the virtual machine and it connects directly with the account to be and bank. So this is like a pretty simplistic design of all the things that bank does. I mean, there's even more, but you can kind of see that the transaction pipeline that Lucas was just describing is sort of here on the bottom. But then there's like all these other things that if you've ever like had to fork this or use it, you have to kind of just like get rid of. Maybe you need it, but most of the time, you know, you probably don't. So the API that we're going to talk about today actually lets you do, like, just this. So you can just give it some inputs, you give it a list of transactions, you get that entire pipeline with the cache, like the VM, all these things for free, and then you get some results, and you even get some metrics, right? So this is kind of like the, the way that we've carved this out of the rest of the runtime. And like, here's just a low level overview for any of you guys who don't know exactly like what I'm talking about. Um, like this is what each of these transactions kind of does, it looks like. And you can see those components from the SVM right here. So like there's the program ID that's gonna be used to load it from the cache and it'll eventually come from an account at some point. You got some accounts that are read, some are write, and some instruction data. And then the BPF loader is gonna load up that executable and the VM is gonna be provisioned for you and you'll execute your program, right? So you get all of this inside this new API. And we have decoupled the SVM from Agave. It's even not in the mono repo, but it's now provided as, as a separate crate. We can just include it in Cargo Tomo and developers can use from it. It has its own public API and no external dependencies in Agave. And now the question that remains, how can we use the SVM? So we have a set of, uh, of items that users need to provide. One is the uh, of the written traits you need to implement because we made them generic over Agave, so anyone can just implement for their, for their needs. And to data structures, the 
transaction processing environment and the transaction processing configs. But also we have, oh, just go back one slide. We also have um, the, the items Agave provides, but they are overridable. So one of the set of built-ins desired can be either built-in functions or just built-in programs like a system program and um, the state program. And we have uh, SysVars, which are variables that programs can access during execution. Developers can just import them or develop their own uh, solutions for these. Now, the overridden traits, we have two that are the main ones. Uh, the first one is a transaction processing callback, which is just basically an accounts provider. Uh, it has functions for the, for the SVM to retrieve accounts from the database, uh, add building accounts, and just check if a set of owners match those of, uh, the owners of that, the, the account, and then the fork graph trait, which let us find the relationship between two slots. And then the two data structures, the first one is the transaction processing environment. This one contains variables necessary for processing a transaction, like the active feature set and how many long ports to charge per signature. We also have the transaction processing config. Uh, this is just a set of configurations for how we want to execute the batch of transactions. So some of the settings we have there are if you want to collect logs from the program and if you want to record the return data from the program. And now what we are calling the SVM is actually the transaction batch processor. This is another data structure. Uh, it contains, among other things, the CISVAR cache and the program cache. And if you want to use the SVM, you need to create um, this data structure in the Rust code. And the SVM entry point is the load and execute sanitized transactions. Uh, it has those uh, five arguments. So you, you need to pass on the callback, the transaction processing callback, trade implementation, the transactions you need to process, the check results, which tells the SVM which transactions are valid for execution, um, transaction processing environment, transaction processing configure, the two threaded data structures I mentioned in the previous slides. So, like, what can you build with this exactly? Um, you saw some of the examples earlier. Of these are like real live projects that are here, probably in this room. And so, here's just a couple like general examples. The list is honestly bigger, but maybe some off-chain services, right? So you can emulate transaction processing outside of like the actual protocol. Some light clients, um, state channels, and rollups, which we were talking about a little bit earlier. Subnets, so it's like maybe avalanche and stuff like that. And hopefully in the future, some ZK proofs. Um, some projects are already doing this as well. So this is kind of like what we would like to have as our like our Anza SVM roadmap. So, you know, as we're talking about today, we've decoupled this SVM API, which has been super nice to use. And soon we want to probably try to do the same thing to the scheduler. And then also we want to have like native support for RIS0 and for ZK proofs, maybe using something else. And then, of course, we want to have lots of reference implementations for you guys to look at, which one of which we're going to show today, but there's also a few more that you can check out as well. And now we have a live demo. So we're going to flip over to a live demo here, but you guys can look at any of our examples already right here. Um, this is just the Agave repo, which most of you should know where it is, hopefully. And then you can just go to SVM examples, and you can find all the reference examples that we're going to put in there. So there's a couple right now. There's an RPC service, and then there's this state channel that we're going to go through. But there will be more soon in the future. Yeah, so if you look at the Agave's repository, we can find the SVM in the SVM folder. Um, we have a, a docs folder for documentations, and in the examples folder, we're going to talk about now about the paint tube example, but we also have a PR for another example, which is a JSON RPC server built with the SVM. So basically, the way that this example kind of works is this is a pretty straightforward like payment channel, which many of you guys might know what this is. But basically, this is an off-chain environment where like two or more parties are going to be allowed to just transact. And this is a simple one. Like You can actually do this with a lot of different kinds of state changes, but the most simple way you can do it is just like token balance changes, right? So like native soul token or like whatever other token you might be working with, um, that's the way we lost our demo, but that's what this is going to basically do. 
So the people in this channel, like the parties in this channel, will transact with each other. And then at the end right here, you can see that that's where like the final resulting balances will settle to the main chain. So as Lucas was talking about earlier, like this trait is one of the like core components you can use to implement. And then you can actually like power your like instance of the SVM API. So right here, like I just created this like basic cache that is gonna just like pull accounts from RPC. And it's kind of like a really simple like dummy implementation. But the point is like, this is a custom way to load accounts that I'm just using to like implement that trait and give this like module a way to load accounts. And you can do this like however you want, however it makes sense for whatever it is you're trying to build. So this is just implementing that trait. And then here is where I'm actually gonna like bootstrap the processor. So I put it all in this function to make it a little bit easier to call like from the internals of the example. But essentially like walking you through what's happening here, like this is that forecraft trait that we were talking about. It's just a state channel, so there are really no forks. There's no like, actually really no blocks or anything like that. So I just mocked this out here. But the actual creation of the processor here, you can see you set this thing up and then you set it up with the proper fork graph, and then you start configuring like the runtime environment, and you configure the cache. And so like we want to be able to transact with SPL tokens. So if here I'm going to actually set up the program cache with the SPL token, like the SPL token program. And so like you can get this program binary from like wherever you want. In this case, I'm just going to get it from the account. Like I'm just going to use the callback, and then you set this up with the cache. And then we also want to be able to transfer like actual soul too. So we're going to add the system program. And then the token program is owned by the like deprecated V2 loader. So we also want to add that. But that's, that's it. That's how you set up the cache and that's how you set up the processor. And there's even like further like configurations you can add. Like we're not even doing like sysbars or anything else here. So you can kind of configure this however you want. And then you basically have yourself a working processor that you can use to like process transactions. Um, and now we can take all these components, put them together, and create the entry point for the pay, the pay tube. So in this function, uh, pay tube process transactions, we create the account loader. See, this is the trade implementation for the transaction, transaction processing callback. Um, we create the branch processor, the, the, our SVM. Set up the environment and the configurations. And given the transactions this function uh, receives, we convert them to the SVM format because PayTube needed a slightly different format uh, for the state channel. And then we call the load execute transactions, the SVM entry point. We have the results here. And then we call our set there, which will set only the account balances in the, um, so on the blockchain. So let's run an example test with SPL tokens. So in this example, we first create uh, the accounts in the associated token accounts. And we start the validator of these accounts. Uh, we create our pay tube with, again, the, the accounts we just created. And then we define some transactions that we will execute in the uh, state channel, so Bob transfer, uh, Alice transfers to Bob two tokens, then Bob transfers five to Will, Alice transfers two to Bob, and Will transfers one to Alice. Uh, all these transactions are then passed to pay to uh, process pay to transactions. And what this will do is that we'll execute all these transactions in the SVM, and then we'll only submit to uh, the, the blockchain the account balances, uh, the, the, the minimal set of transactions we need for, for the accounts to get their final balance. And in the end of the test, we query the validator to check if the balances are correct. Now if we execute the test, we can show that this is happening. Okay, so here we've got the logs. This is what has happened in the SVM. Uh, inside pay tube. So there were uh, four transfer instructions and four transactions. And then when we settle in the, in the blockchain, we only have one transaction and three instructions for transfers.
Yeah, and so basically this is like the, the crux of this innovation here is like you can have a ton of transactions that you might use in a state channel. But as you can see, like this is a pretty simple example to go from four to one. But imagine you're going from like millions of transactions to like a few thousand, right? Like you could greatly reduce the costs of settling this information on the L1 in something like a state channel. And like as we showed you, like this is really all you need to do to set this entire thing up. And with just this bootstrapping method, like just using this API, you can literally just bootstrap an entire like roll up or anything that you want to do just using these like few pretty simple steps and like not a very big code base. So you can kind of focus on exactly what it is that you're trying to build and what you're trying to innovate with whatever project it is that you're trying to spin up. Thanks, guys.